You're listening to Fakeologist Radio, where we talk about the biggest hoax of our time, 9-11, and all the psyops and hoaxes before and after September 11th, 2001. You can call us at 518-564-0491 or Skype contact Fakeologist. We stream 24-7 at stream.fakeologist.com. Our archives are at radio.fakeologist.com. The show normally broadcasts at 9.11 p.m. Eastern Time, but we may live broadcast any evening time as guests become available. Now, here's your host, Avarado. Hey everybody, it's episode 136. This episode is with Mark Sargent of Flat Earth Clues. You'll see below a playlist of all 9 plus 1 guide of the Flat Earth Clues series. I decided to take Mark up on his offer and dial the phone number that he left at the end of each of his videos. I didn't expect anyone to answer the phone. I thought maybe NSA, PSYOPs, the military of some description would answer the phone or go to a voicemail or I'd get some very... I'd get an answering machine actually. But actually Mark picked up the phone and much to my surprise... He answered and was ready to chat. I didn't think it would last this long, but Mark is a very interesting and a very convincing person. And I had just finished watching the entire series and I was pretty much blown away by it. It gave me similar feelings to the feelings I had when I watched September Clues, no relation. And apparently Mark has never even seen September Clues. And when I had that sensation, I thought, wow, wouldn't this be fantastic if I could just talk to the author right away while it's still fresh on my mind? And I had a few questions. I didn't get them all in because I forgot some of them. But Mark sounded pretty good and he, he promised to come back and maybe take some of your calls and questions. But my initial impression was this is the best flat earth movie that I have seen Put all put all of the anomalies and questions together in a really convincing way and it, I'm not on board necessarily with every component of it but boy it sure makes me think I think really really hard again I don't know what we're spinning on or floating on or just squatting on but this was a pretty good set of arguments put in a very clear way obviously Mark said he's done video presentations before in a slide format and he did a really great job syncing the audio to the imagery. I did listen to all the audio tracks separately just so I could maybe concentrate a little more. If you listen to audio while you're driving, your brain works and processes differently. It's less likely to be distracted. I encourage everyone to try that. For the week of March 8th or so, I'm going to play my interview that you're going to be listening to in a minute with Mark on s1.fakeologist.com. And I'm also going to stitch all his audios together into one long audio. I don't know what the total minute count would be, but I would guess about an hour to 90 minutes. So anyone who wants to listen and stream the audio in one shot can do so. In this case, you don't really need the imagery that goes with the video to understand or get his ideas into your brain. It helps, but it's not necessary. He's very well spoken and he read quite clearly. I think he scripted it and it's very clear what he's talking about. And I, I've listened to the whole thing twice and I'm gonna listen to it again. I really am. I just, there's so many great concepts and their nine chapters are clearly delineated. And he came up with some great points, considerations that I had never thought of. I didn't even ask him about the moon and the stars and the sun, but 
for me, it's really way out that there's a dome. I just, I just don't buy it in any way. But I have no way of arguing against it right now. And I'm not sure I'm going to spend any time thinking about it much more. But just his arguments are really great and very clear. And certainly, if there was a leader in presentations for the Flat Earth, then this series right now as of March 2015, is it. So I hope you enjoy this broadcast that I had with Mark. It went live, and this was one show that was unannounced because I wasn't even sure Mark would be at the other end of the phone. So it's just another reason to, in the afternoons on the weekend, just Stay tuned to chat.fakeologist.com. That's the only place I said, hey, I got someone on the phone. You better listen live. And we went live. So that would have been your opportunity to listen. I didn't send out an email alert this time because I just wasn't sure how this conversation was going to go. Anyway, don't forget we have audiochat.fakeologist.com. We have the regular chat.fakeologist.com. We have forums.fakeologist.com. We have many, many links on the right side of the website, fakeologist.com. There's lots of ways to participate. I'm always looking for new voices. Let this be your call out. If you're a new voice, and I've heard from a few new voices this week, please contact me at contact.fakeologist.com and hit me up on Skype at fakeologist.com. There's so many ways to connect, except Facebook, except Twitter. Those are places I do not really spend any effort or time into because they're not my domain. They're someone else's, and I'm not going to give them my efforts. But there are many ways to contact me, so please go ahead and contact me, and I'd like to talk to any and everyone about all these different psychological operation hoaxes, and what many would consider far out concepts but maybe these far out concepts are slowly coming in to the general consensus psyche of the population enjoy the interview with mark <laughs> well it's so, so do you i and you'll have to forgive me because i i haven't really been on on youtube that much or do you do you uh go after and try to Stomp out these things on a regular basis, or are you? Uh... <laughs> well, let me just. Do you mind if I record this call? No, no, not at all. Go ahead. Because uh, I value your time, and and uh, I don't know if I'll be able to speak to you on a regular basis. But I just, th you're this. I just finished watching this, and uh, it blew me away. Blew me cool. away. Did, I have a website did... called fakeologist dot com. Okay. And. Um, I study this this kind of stuff, and, and Flat Earth was definitely on my list because uh, I question everything now, now that I'm uh, so convinced that I've been fooled in so many areas of life. So sure, th sure. This, this, is, this is easy for me to absorb. I, I don't have a problem with any of it, really, at this point. Fantastic. So it's... Uh, <laughs> it's uh, I really... And, and Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm just I, no, as soon as I started watching it because I've watched quite a few flat Earth videos and they're pretty rough and pretty raw and pretty not convincing. Just because if they're the average amateur is not going to have much to say because yeah, yeah, and, and even if they do, the chances of them having any structure is is pretty slim. Yeah. So when I see something <laughs> like yours, so spit and polished, I do get kind of concerned that I'm just watching another military production since they control no. most of the planet. Because it oh, is, so it's the, it, it is so, so good. So you're wondering if um if I'm a, I'm a professional shill in this case. You know what? I have been <laughs> I'm attacked by shills daily. Yeah. I have a website called fakeologist.com. All it really is is just a fan site. I like different stuff, and I'm trying to create a picture for myself mm -hmm. of the world, and I just am putting it out there for people to agree or disagree. And I get lots of people that agree, but I get way more people that disagree and yeah. really try and knock me off and disrupt me. I have I have people I know for 
sure that are assigned to me and knock me around and, and just try and disrupt me. You, you but, should take that as a compliment. <laughs> well, that's what everyone tells me to do, but it takes a lot of my time. But yeah. uh, I have so many yeah, people yeah. that I like that I've met on my website that are so cool and they just seem real. And yeah. if they're fake or they're shills or trolls, they're so good that I'm okay with it because they're really nice to me. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I'm sure there's good trolls and bad trolls. But, yeah, I was looking for something like your video that puts it all together because I could never even put – five minutes like you did together and, and make any sense. But man, did you ever blow it away with the plane travel stuff and the GPS? Those are all the things <laughs> that I was thinking, God, if someone could just make this coherent. I lucked out on the GPS thing. Beautiful. Because, thank you. Thank oh, you. I, 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 it was, I, it, I it's done, a work you know, of I was, art. <laughs> I, I I am flattered and blushing at the same time. No, it's amazing. Uh, w w what I did was um, initially, you know, I started out like most people. You know, I was I was just going to stomp on this thing and uh, and and smush it into the ground because it was it was the, literally the last conspiracy I ever looked at. You know, I I went through every one of them. You know, twice, three times, ten times over. And this is one of those folders that I just would not pick up and look at because it's ridiculous. It's it's silly, you know. It's it's something that's burned into our brains as, yeah. as the most ludicrous thing you've ever heard. Hey, do you mind like, if we it, go? Do you mind if we go live on the internet, or do you want to? No, do, go ahead. Oh, why, you want to go live now? Yeah, why not? Because sure, sure, I don't sure, normally. I don't. I didn't schedule this, but I thought, well, if no, I no, can no. hit him, I can just press a button and we're live. Boom, we're live. No, that's fine. I'm, that's fine. I, in fact, I've got a radio interview uh, in two days anyway. So I'm oh, do you? Ready for it. We could do practice. Yeah, they call and they they called me up, but I'll get to that in a second. So, <clears throat> so um, I was looking at you know th this was the folder that I would not look at. I refused to look at it. It was like a like you know it's kind of, this kind of dates it, but. It like like the last movie in, in Blockbuster, you've seen everything else and there's something sitting on the shelf titled something awful. And and you know, it's like, Oh, I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna do it, but I'll I'll do it. So once I started digging into it, I thought I'd blow it out in a weekend and uh, and be done with it. But after a couple days and starting to look at stuff and I'm going, Man, some of this stuff is starting to starting to sink in and, and you know, I'm, I'm basically finding too many loose ends not to, not to pursue them. And then uh, I get on, There's a, there was a guy, a German guy, as a matter of fact, he was on YouTube. He posted a, a video all in German about the flight paths. Mm -hmm. and, he's go, and, he's, and he was saying that, look, there's something wrong in the Southern Hemisphere. There's, you can't get certain flights. The, the routes are screwed up. Yeah, and and um, you know, even though he was he was describing everything in German and you know, all the text was in German, the the travel sites were in English. And I'm looking, I'm going, yeah, that does seem a little odd. So I I started putting you know stuff together, and so I did a general guide, and, and like you, you know, you you saw some of the the flat Earth people that are out there, and and you know, the conspiracy guys tend to you know go on jags and tears, and and really mm -hmm. you know they tend to get scattered. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut and chop it up into uh, you know digestible sections, and uh, you know if I can make it. Basically, what I tried to do was I tried to build it myself. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna try to build my own. If I was gonna build the flat Earth, I'm, this is how I'm gonna build it. And if mm -hmm. I get to any point where I say that it's just it's just not jiving, it's not gonna work. I'm just going to throw the whole thing out and, and not do anything. Mm -hmm. And as I was going through it more and more, I was realizing that the structure was working. And the further I went along, uh, the more I couldn't find any flaws. As a matter of fact, I just found more and more design um, issues that were that were really quite clever. Yeah. And uh, and, and then I then, it's, then I was going, okay, so if this is you know, and I did not want it to be true, <laughs> you know, like anybody, it's like it's the last thing you want. Um, well, I didn't. But, care. I don't care if it's true anymore. I never. I never. I was never at that point. But go ahead. Uh, yeah. So I was. Yeah. I, I. Well, I mean, I didn't want it to be true because it was like because it, because it would have been for me. It would have been like really. I waited this long <laughs> to finally look at this thing, and now I was kicking myself because it's like oh, I should have looked at this a long time ago. Uh, you know, it's just one of those hidden gems. And so I, then I said, okay, if. If the design is, works, and if the design is very, very possible, I mean, you know, I made the leap from, uh, you know, the argument is usually went like, is it possible versus non-possible, and you know, then you get into the whole science and gravity and you know, all the all the the back and forth. 
So I just took the lead and said, okay, it's definitely possible. Then when the heck did anybody find out about this? You know, because it's not something, you know, it's not one of those secrets, you know, like any other conspiracy, which would just be buried so deep because we live here. So it's only something that can be kept secret so long. So then I had to work through the timeline. I'm going, okay, everything looks good. Everything, you know, 1900, 1930, 1940. Everything looks good, and then about 1956, 1957, things get really weird. You know, a lot of a lot of different. Uh, I call them the authority. You know, you can call it government or rich people or kings and queens, whatever you want to call them. But the more I started looking at the moves that were being made, you know, starting in 1957 and then ending really around the time of the of, of NASA, some really decisive moves were made, which. I, you know, I was looking, I was going, yeah, that's exactly the moves you're going to make. You know, if, if, you know, and everything that I was looking at, you know, everything from, uh, you know, the, the high altitude nuclear uh, tests to the, the complete shutting off of Antarctica and then putting that so far under the covers that nobody even talks about it to, um, uh, you know, just, just the space program in general, little things that were you know and but the thing that of course what you mentioned uh was the flight routes that's that's the part that i kind of stuck on because you know if there's if there's three rules to the flat earth model one being you know that no exterior uh space shot can have um uh, a pan there can be no panning shots uh the second is you can't have any authentic pictures of the earth which you know again i saw this 15 years ago uh, a little side story mm-hmm. Fifteen years. This shows you how how well done it was. I was like, I was looking like you know. Remember the movie Ocean's Eleven, the con. You know when you when you watch a really good movie about a good con. Oh, I've, you know, I love one, those movies. Yeah. Yeah, where, where you don't see it until the very end, and all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, this is how he did it. Boom, 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 boom. That's what I was looking at. So, fifteen years ago, uh, you know, I was I was looking for. Um, I had a whole bunch of uh, monitors in my in a new office. I was going, oh, well, I'm going to put a neat little, I'm going to put a, a nice high-res picture of the Earth on every one of these monitors. And so I go online, and I, I take a quick look at, um, you know, look for images. And there's only one image. And I, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating here. There was literally that, you know, that 1968, 1969 shot where they're showing, you know, the bottom part of Africa and all of Antarctica. And it was just rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of the same picture. And I'm looking at him, and, and, you know, and again, the mind has to make a leap. I'm looking, why is there only one picture of the Earth? It's, it's 2000. It's the year yeah. 2000. Why is there only one picture of the Earth? It doesn't make any sense. But I was so irritated. I, you know, I just flipped off the screen. I said, screw you, NASA. <laughs> and, and then went and just picked a different, you know, a whole, whole different direction. But that's how, our, that's how we work. So anyway, the third rule is, which is the one you know that anybody can prove a- anytime they want. Just go online, which you probably did, uh, and that is uh, there's no shortcuts on a on a flat Earth. So yeah. if the Earth if the Earth is more flat than round, then there's going to be some plane routes that are going to be screwed up. Mm-hmm. You know they're they're going to be wrong and they're going to have to be hidden because you can't fake the plane routes. The only thing you can do is kind of you know do a sleight of hand. Um, Mm-hmm. To, to yeah, them. you've explained that better than anyone else because that there is one video mm-hmm. that was pretty good from someone yeah. else where he's got the plane spinning around. He's going on that um, if, if the plane goes west, then it oh, should yeah, get yeah, there yeah, faster. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. kind of thing. I like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I and I'm trying. Yeah, and I got those too. But for people, most people out there, they don't want to hear math. You know, they don't want to hear physics and and crap like that. What I try to do is like, oh, you know, I try to be as visual and and um, as structured as possible. So yeah, but I understand what you mean. But I won't get into it. You know, planes east versus west. How are they both do, covering the same distance, the same amount of time? Or another one, which you probably heard was, if you've got centrifugal force um, around, you know, if the if the equator, if you're standing on the equator, it's spinning, you know, at a thousand miles an hour. Yeah. And you're standing on the North Pole, and you're spinning at zero miles an hour. Yeah. Then, then technically, there should be a weight difference yeah, between yeah. the North Pole and the equator. It, and, and fine, if so maybe it's not twenty, thirty pounds, but it would be measurable. You know. Yeah. And, you know, and why isn't anyone doing that experiment exactly? Yeah. Why isn't doing that? Sorry, but yeah. I went a completely different route way, which was okay. Um, and anyone can check this out. You know, you can if you try to book a flight from anywhere the the uh, in like 
South America, South South America, to anywhere near Australia that includes New Zealand. Um, the the flight should just go straight over the the South Pacific Ocean. It's seventy four hundred miles. It's a straight shot. You can you can measure it yourself. It's easy on yeah. a globe. But every time you tried to book it, it would bounce you all over the place. You know, it'd, it'd be these weird routes, and ninety five percent of the the plane flights are nonstop. And so what happened was after I did video Clue Seven. Uh, which was called The Long Haul, I started getting emails from people. They're saying, yeah, we're finding some, some stuff between like Auckland, New Zealand and Santiago, Chile. You know, there's a few little nonsense. I mean, very few, just a handful, yeah. but they're out there. And so, uh, in fact, the radio show that uh, wanted to, to talk to me next week, they, uh, they said the same thing. They said, you might want to get ready for this. So I said, okay. I, I, so I just stared at the screen for an entire week on planefinder.net and tried to figure out how they were doing it because it just didn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. So I'm staring at the screen and you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm dense sometimes and, and I'm staring at it, I'm staring at it, I'm going, okay, where are the nonstops? And then, then it occurred to me, it's like, wait a minute, where are the connections? Wait, where's anything? There's nothing red in the oceans below the equator. And uh, okay, I'm going, okay, where are they? You know, because I can see them on the land. That's obvious. You can see them at the airports. But, um, you know, at some point, you know, you don't see them anymore. So yeah. I watch a silly flight coming out of um, Brazil, uh-huh. and it's heading towards uh, Johannesburg. Right. South so it Africa. should be going over the South Atlantic, right? South Atlantic, which is, has nothing to do with, with the, the flat model. You know, it shouldn't – that doesn't even factor into the, the flat math most of the time because it's, it's slight. And so I'm staring at it, I'm staring at it, I, and I was going, oh, it's so boring. It's like watching paint dry. Yeah. So I, I go and, uh, you know, get something to drink, and I come back, and the plane's gone. I was going, oh, it doesn't make any sense. So, you know, sure enough, you know, it, it's, it's just not there anymore. So I start watching, this. that point, I just start watching every plane that's leaving South America heading for Africa. And when they got offshore, you know, a certain, certain point, they just blinked out. <laughs> And as I'm doing that, because there was a couple of the guys that were, I was kind of corresponding with, and a guy sent something to me. He goes, check out the flight logs on this. You know, the, the, and and we, I was looking, and, it, and so not only did they blink out on the real-time radar, but they also, the, the logs were being erased mm-hmm. on, on the actual log. It changed from whatever location it was to either the word approximate mm-hmm. or the word estimated. And, and this was over and over, I mean, completely consistent. And so at, to this point, I'm just going, wow, it's bulletproof. Yeah, and, and I figured out exactly what they were doing, which was, which was what I would expect. It's the lowest maintenance of the whole thing. So if anyone's listening here, here's, what, here's what's happening. If you're flying anywhere yeah, I'm looking in the southern at the, hemisphere. I'm looking at the map now. Yeah, if you're flying anywhere in the southern hemisphere, uh, your flight, once it gets to a certain point in the ocean, is vanished just disappears and it's the off the radar it, yeah. yeah it goes off the radar and the reason is well it goes off gps which is amazing yeah and it stays off until you're almost on your destination and then maybe an hour before you get to your destination it'll well, reappear it's off land. it's off visible gps it's still probably being tracked but the computer probably just has a filter that blocks it from public viewing right the military must know where it is the military probably knows where it yeah. is, but the military is not going to talk about it. Right, and the and the reason is the reason why they're doing it, and again, it's it's tough to get your head around, is because the route they're taking is not the route you're supposed to take. Right, uh, on a on a globe, the shortest route is over the Pacific Ocean, but if it's not a globe. The short the, the the Pacific Ocean becomes three thousand miles longer or something. That yeah. effect. I mean it's it's much much longer, and it's it's basically the long way around. And nobody wants to do that. So what they do is to make sure the lesser of two evils is just fly you over the land. Yeah. Preferably preferably at night, and then not show you where you are, mm-hmm. so that so that you don't question. And you know most people. I mean there's 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 several layers that that work in their favor. One is, you know, in long flights, people are just sleeping in their seats anyway or drinking or, or both, and, um, you know, they don't care. Or if they look out the window, they don't make the connection, you know. And, and even if they were looking out the window and you saw wouldn't, a land, You wouldn't know on it. Yeah, you wouldn't. Who are you going to call? You yeah, what, what, well, what, what would you think? That the, the best part of this is the indoctrination, and that is yeah. if, you're looking, if you're looking down and you see land, what's the first thing you're going to think? It's like, 
I have no idea where we are. You might scratch your head, but you're not going to make the leap. In fact, even a plane navigator, uh, you know, they've got other motivations. Are you kidding? Know, when I not- fly to Florida and I wa- I've watched my flight on the little screen in front of me, I can't figure out where I am exactly. You know, I'm, I'm almost near the ground. I'm looking for landmarks and I can't figure out where I am, which direction I'm going. I, you're, you get fairly disoriented. Yeah, but, but yeah. And, and so not only do you get disoriented, though, there is such a huge gap that you have to overcome because the first thing, you know, you're going to think, okay, I don't know where I am. I'm confused. You know, you're never going to say the map's wrong. You're never, ever, ever yeah. going to say that because, you know, and this is the, the Reader's Digest version of my indoctrination thing. This is the only conspiracy which we debunk to children. That's it. You know, you put a globe in a first grade classroom. Yeah. The kid, and then you leave, you know, the kid stays there for 12 years. You don't even have to tell them about it. You know, you just leave it there. You don't have to, you know, put, do any worksheets or anything like that. And then, you know, when they gr- get out of high school, boom, that's, that's it. It's over. But it's it's in, it's just amazing to see because everything that I have seen uh, the authority do to try to hide this is what I would do to hide it. I mean, they're all very very good. You know, like killing killing the GPS in the in the southern hemisphere. It's you'd think it's overkill, but it's one of those out of sight out of mind things. So, yeah. like for example, you know, the, like the South Atlantic flights, which I mentioned, you yeah. don't have to kill the South Atlantic flights. You could leave those. It's, it wouldn't it wouldn't screw up anything, yeah. except that you don't want people looking at it. Well, how uh, long is know. that flight? Because I'm looking at the map. It looks like if you went from, say, the eastern part of Brazil to Africa, just looking yeah. on the Google Maps, it looks like the same distance, say, from one side of the United States to the, the other. Yeah, yeah, three thousand miles. Give so how do they go? So how do they, do they, they have they to? Have, they have to fly north have, over the North Pole, pretty much, right? No, no, get, no, no. For that, for that flight, it doesn't have to be that exaggerated. But they have to kill them. They have to. They have to make those flights vanish because they have to make all the flights vanish. Yeah, it's an all or nothing deal. If you if you let those okay. planes, the red planes, show up on on the flight tracker. People are going to start staring at the other oceans, going, "Oh, hey, what about the other flight?" Okay, you know, so they still- really do probably. Well, oh, that is a shorter. That is an equivalent distance, even on a flat Earth. Is that what you're saying? Uh, it's pretty. It's closer. It's close it's enough. Closer. Okay. The, the the angle might be off, but no one's going to question it. As oh. a matter of fact, the angles on the north, the northern hemisphere, is screwed up too, and people have been been bugging me to to cover that, but. It's not nearly as exaggerated as the South. So it's the so South North, Pacific Ocean crossing so Pacific that's Ocean, problematic. Yeah, if you're heading straight from like Los Angeles or San Francisco to say China, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you would go, you know, straight across the ocean, right? You know, yeah. go past Hawaii, and that'd be a whole thing. But all the flights they go north. They head towards. Uh, they they like they hug the curve of, of Alaska. But like they say that's over. the Great Circle, though, of the curved Earth. Well, that, that's right? what they say. That, yeah. if, you look on the, if you look on the flat map, it's a straight shot. Right. On but, a flat map, that's what you're going to go. And so, yeah, between – there's so many little angles that they throw at you. Yeah, and say, the great circles. They say planes always travel in the great circle to conform to the sphere of the globe. Yeah. yeah. That's always yeah. the explanation and, and for even, that. Even the pilots and, – and there's even – you know, I've had a few people discuss with me. It's like – well, you know, is that is it possible that that GPS? That's the whole reason it was built. I go, yeah, it's extremely possible because mm-hmm. GPS is what it's the Bible of 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 the skies. You know, it's it's what everyone you just put. In fact, the planes are synced up to you. Put it on autopilot. The GPS runs the plane. Yeah, they said the pilots is the, uh, the physical pilot's actually the backup. The plane is all yeah. is all autopilot. <laughs> yeah. He's just the backup so, in case the computer fails. Everything is automated now. Yeah. Yeah, so if if you even have a, a, a like mm-hmm. a clever you know guy that is like specializes in I don't even know if they have doc you know dedicated navigators anymore you know like they used yeah. to back in the day, but if you had a clever guy here's a perfect example for it you know because people would say well the pilots absolutely would be in us no no they wouldn't because again there's that weird leap you have to make so even if a navigator is going well you know the fuel consumption isn't working out and I have no idea what we're flying over but it certainly isn't the route well I it would comes take. down to. Who's he going to tell? 
Yeah, who's who are you going to tell? And he's in a he, in a pretty high pay position. Some might say pilots are overpaid. Maybe there's a yeah. reason for it uh, because, of course, everyone seems to want to fly and be a pilot. So wh- why are they so highly paid? Why are they? Why are so many ex-military? Uh, there you go. Well, there's always plausible deniability reasoning for everything, and yeah. we go into that. But the bottom line is that maybe this is a lot about information control more than anything. Yeah, and and I, I totally agree. And and I've been saying I've I've my website's of course been dedicated to exposing the 9/11 hoax and. I don't know sure. where you stand on that, but after I oh, decided, I, oh, yeah. Yeah, after I decided that, that it's it was a military media hoax from start to finish, including victims. I don't sure. know if you're familiar with that concept. Yep. And yep. I just said, yep. I'm going to the biggies now. I went to nuclear, and I'm pretty damn convinced that is a huge hoax as well. Which may help you with your yeah you know I I wasn't you know I yes I I had heard of that as well but I couldn't really you know with something like this I didn't want to stretch it too thin because remember no, I'm you, trying to get no I know what you mean you can't yeah you can't cross we even I get accused you can't necessarily publicly cross the line to, into everything as a hoax because then you're yeah. very easily dismissed. I yeah, get that. Yeah, and if you, yeah, if you tell, yeah, if you go down the road where every little topic that I'm talking about is a hoax, I mean, I, yeah, people yeah. bug me about that. You will be dismissed well. instantly. I've been dismissed many times where it's so easy to say, well, you just think everything's a hoax. You don't even think you're talking to me right now. You, <laughs> and then, then we get, we get really crazy. Like, you don't think you're even here. You know, I mean, nice. it just, nice. it gets stupid, but it's a yeah. very slippery slope, and I get it, and I respect yeah. people. And I, I almost encourage people that do compart- – they, they stick to compartmentalizing some of the research. So if you're the 9-11 as a deception expert, it's almost better for you just to stay there because yeah. if you start going on about um, exploring the explanation for the solar system, there then you, you yeah. can get yeah, tarred yeah. with, you oh, you're your kooky. Wheel, your wheel yeah, <laughs> exactly. But there's, there's nothing wrong with you being open to questioning it because we are so predisposed to questioning some of the biggest media events of our day that it yeah. is only sensible and logical, as the ex-Mr. Spock or the late Mr. Spock used to say, to yeah. re-examine everything we're told. And that is the point I'm at. I'm enjoying going back in history and yeah. the earth, the shape of the earth, what's going on, what's Antarctica, <laughs> it's all part of it and the way you yeah. broke down uh the explorer with the bird exploring antarctica and the timeline and how it all matches up with uh, the next wave of deception to literally oh, yeah. pick up where he left off and i go as far as questioning well who was bird well anytime someone's in the military to me they are in on it however so i'm not I'm not oh, no, convinced I, that I think Bird. He was, he was in on it too, but yeah. I don't think he was in on it in the beginning. Because remember, he was he was running point. Um, mm-hmm. Like you know what I tried to to cover, and I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, no, was, I'm um, happy. Go ahead. Uh, was that you know the, the, these people say? Well, there was people that probably knew for centuries and centuries. You know, I was like, I have no doubt, like the Masons knew, but I'm not going to get sure. into that. Or the higher Nazi levels, or the building... higher levels. The yeah, people with all but... the money, they got the knowledge. I'm, I'm, but, e- yeah. but even if they had the knowledge, this this that's what makes this one different. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, you know, uh, again, I, I I wanted to be a joke. I wanted it to be a gag. But as I I was digging into it, I realized that even the leaders, like say you were the king of France in 1700, right? And someone brought you an old scroll that showed you, you know, what the world really looked like. What good would it do you? You know, mm-hmm. you you've got no resources or technology to even check it out. For, you know, and I'm sure that was passed on for generations and generations, probably the last 500 years, where mm-hmm. they were saying, but until you could actually, you know, it's one thing, you know, like anything, you know, until you see it face to face, until somebody comes back like your your point guy, Bird, you know, in the 1954, when he did that, that interview, which you saw, yeah, you know, it, it was obvious to me, he was absolutely in the clear at that point, because he was like, Oh, yeah, we're going to carve this thing up like a like a Christmas hand. Yeah, nobody you know? really you, you don't think they got to him or he, he wasn't being properly managed at that point. He should oh, no, have never no, been able talked, to open his mouth. 
No, no, no. I think he was probably managed. Okay. Uh, but, but I don't think at that point he had run into it because remember the ex- he there was still an expedition one left which was, yeah. he was prepping for, which was Operation Deep Freeze, in 19, from 1955 to 1956 was which was really the crux of this whole thing because it's physically the last public expedition that's ever been down there. I think in '54. Oh yeah, they were managing him. But okay. he didn't even see it because remember he was going to be the guy they were sending him to find it, and so in I fifty whatever it was fifty five fifty six he finds it, and then yeah he has, <clears throat> excuse me then he has to report back and uh, then the whole thing falls apart after that. But the um, the leaders that were even ordering him even they didn't know for sure you know because again you don't know because you never had anybody you know even him you know. F- Let's say he was absolutely, you know, being controlled, and you know, they, and, and in fact, maybe he was kept out of the loop where the the the, the higher higher ups, you know, they knew what he might find, but mm-hmm. they weren't going to tell him. And so, you know, when he found out, you know, that that's when everything, you know, everything changed. Well, they maybe so. he was the first to really go down there and report back. So they wanted him to have something <laughs> real to say. That yeah, that's maybe- what I, that. Was, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, and, maybe. And some, and, yeah, maybe there was some suspicion. There was some kind of documentation from some Captain Cook yeah, or someone back before. Forever, yeah, yeah. But, but, but you still needed, like anything, you know, you're not going to go out yourself. No. If you're, you know, you, uh, you're going to send whoever the best is, and he was definitely the guy. And and it's like you know, and and again, you know, he was super excited. You could tell in that in that television interview that he did, you know, how yeah. excited he was. It was like, oh, it, there's coal and oil and uranium and minerals. You know, it's like, it's like, he, and he, and he, and he stated, he's like, oh, obviously there's going to be expeditions every year. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> that was, that, that, for me, that was what sunk, you know, that's, that's, was my, my, my point of no return because it was, the attitude was, you know, you had all these nations down there, Russia and Great Britain and the United States, you know, and all the others saying, we are going in, we're going to make a ton of money. And then the next day, it was like, we are out of here. <laughs> and that, that, But that was, was publicly what was it. But God knows what happened after that. And then they started yeah. throwing in the quackery, the crazy, yeah. which derails anyone seriously looking yeah. into it. The moon bases, the Nazis, their favorite whipping boy. Oh, yeah, boy. yeah, yeah. And oh, that, well, that, get, that spins you, it into crazy land and makes you look yeah, stupid it, for looking into it. It, it did, which is why, you know, I just glossed over it. It was like, fine, Operation uh, Operation High Jump, which we know at least that part was real. Yeah. When they went down there with a big military force, but no one really knows what, what they went down there for. So, and, and you could say, well, it was Nazis, and, you know, people came back to me and says, well, it was obviously, you know. They There's were, only they two kind of, people down there, Nazis and penguins, and they're probably but, Nazi penguins. Yeah, but. <laughs> I mean, nice. let's, let's, be, let's but, be facetious about it because that's all we're told to this day, right? We got yeah, penguins yeah, but, and Nazis but, and UFO bases. <laughs> but my argument was it's like, fine, so Operation High Jumped happened. Whatever happened, they handled it because Bird returned, did television interviews, and, and you could mm-hmm. tell, you know, in his, in his 1954 interview that everything was fine. You know, it was like again, whatever whatever problem they had in nineteen what was it, 1946 when Operation High Jump happened, that was that was ancient history. It was it was done. But again, you know, once they locked down, you know, uh, I'll give you a coincidence. You know, they because um, uh, they always like to release a little glimmer of truth. You know, they said they discovered you know what they called the Van Allen radiation belt in 1959, which to me is a hoax. Yeah, and coincidentally. That was the same year they locked down Antarctica. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, a lot you got went your down. Ad- the what? A lot went down. It's almost like they were establishing their mythology for the future in those short years. They were so creative during during that period when World yeah. War II ended to the Kennedy yeah. era. They were busy. Yeah. They had some of the best science fiction writers creating our science future, and it hasn't changed really. Yeah, I, and I think it's it's mythology. I I, I agree with you. A hundred year but, mythology, good for a hundred years. For, for this is this was a kind of a special case. You know, most conspiracies, again, you know, they're they're small enough you can contain them, you can bury them, you can put them in vaults and stick them in Groom Lake or whatever. Mm-hmm. But this was one of those things where it was so big. I think even they thought, 
you, you, you know, uh, you know, I'll ask you, you know, would you agree that there would have to be some contingency for if eventually it start, this started to leak out? You know, I you, think have- I, I think these things are done by the military. They have the the best and the brightest. They run the psychological. Yeah. I think the most heavily funded part of the military is the psychological operations wing of the army. These are the right. smartest people. They hire all the best screenwriters and screen players and authors. They sure. create our culture, and I think they. I think every single day they. Okay, what's where, where's the hoax at today? Let's evaluate. Okay, where where's it going? Okay, this is the buzz on the internet. Here's where Twitter's trending. Here's YouTube trending. Or yep. if we want to go back 30 years, let's get the letters to the editor. Okay, well we know like uh, this is this is what the letter writers are saying. It looks like we're going to have to um, create some false letter writers and editorial writers to start to shape the herd because the military formulates majority opinion. That is one of their number one tasks they have to create the majority opinion so even when you and i our neighbor our boss when we're all fermenting an opposing Mm -hmm. majority view they're going to say no this is the majority view you're in the minority so you're looking a little crazy right now and so are you Uh and you and you and so no this is the majority and they'll publish it they'll promote it they'll say this is what everyone's thinking right now yeah and they will steer dissent their way so i i think that all these things are managed on a daily basis so when i'm interviewing you now yeah we're being watched i mean you can we could be watched a million ways they've got more tools than ever now i'm not a paranoid person except within reason but the point is now they're taking this interview and they're going to see well well the fakeologist just met up with mark who just released a fantastic video series that wow this is getting good now we have some pretty interesting stuff that might be getting close to the truth so yeah. you we're going to see some counter cointel pro some some yeah, anti propaganda would- and I was I, worried about that. Uh, well, I don't think it's I, any. I don't think it's anything to be physically worried about. I hope not, because I I really do hope that the, that our that the people that create our culture and and run our psyops, they I think I'm pretty convinced they operate within within the law. I don't think they kill sure. people. I'm hoping. Sure. See, well, yeah, I mean, well, you try to do the carrot and the stick at the same time, if you can, if you can do it. I mean, and, yeah. and they have the budget, for God's sake. Well, they have all the money. Yeah. They print so, the money. But, but <laughs> when, when I was a little leery, I got to tell you, when, when uh, before I released you know, the last, well, before I released Clue 9 about the planes, because it was like, uh, now I've got a problem, because now I'm actually showing something. That that you know looks so deliberate, at, you know, bordering on you know overly blatant, and uh, you know. So now, it's, but 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 I will say this, to, you know, and I was a little leery when I saw your name show up on uh, on caller ID, and that was I have, <laughs> fakeologist. <laughs> well, well, yeah, because you know you, you immediately think you know oh a, a debunker. I I was just saying, <laughs> well, I, cause yeah, we'll, I, I know yet, I have yet. I have yet to get one. Now, in truth, yes, I turned off the uh, the comments section of, of the videos because it just gets so ugly in there that it's like, no, I'm not going to mediate this stuff. Look, i got better things to do. You guys want to mirror it and mediate it on other sites, which which have happened. That's fine. Yeah, but, I was going to actually uh, mirror your whole thing, too, because it's fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. But There's I no haven't doubt. Ha- I haven't had a single debunker email. You know, phone calls, that's one thing. you got to be pretty brave, you know, the call. Yeah, I can't believe but, you put your phone number up, and that's how I reached you, by the way. I, I would well, never do you that. Know, that was a risk, but it was mostly because I've seen people get labeled as, and I think it's overly done, uh, labeled as shills so quickly, you know. And, yeah, you know, I know. And, and, and that it's like, it's like, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to put out my email address, Here's my phone number. This is where I live. <laughs> you know, this is my backstory. You can check it all out. You can, you know, because now you know everything's on the internet. You Google me. You can, you can follow me all the way back to freaking grade school. Wow, uh, you got balls. And, you got more balls than well, me. Sorry, it, it's not it's not balls. <laughs> what, what are they going to do? I mean, who's the shills aren't the, the shills aren't going to come? You know, to my house. The trolls aren't going to come to my house. Uh, in oh, fact, I know. the trolls will just That's stay true. away. That's true. 
As far as the government, look, they're going to find me anyway. <laughs> I know, but it's just the general harassment. It's the exposure. I don't know. Yeah, now, now we can but, profile you, and you're that but, guy. And I don't. Will it affect your employment and all but, that crap? But from a from a um, from a debunker standpoint, look, you know, I started out trying to debunk this. So <laughs> if you think, and then I ended up being a convert, which is weird because it's the convert of the smallest club in the world. Uh, you know, of all the conspiracies I wanted to join up on, you know, because I didn't post any, you know, I haven't posted anything on anything, you know, not Apollo, not 9-11, not Pearl Harbor, any, you know, not really much of anything. So, Well, that's you good because now you're, 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 you're known as the yeah, is, flat, earth, yeah, flat earth guy. Yeah, this is, yeah, exactly. So now apparently I'm, I've become the flat earth authority overnight. And I thought but, that Matt guy, and you put him in your video, the Matt NASA comedy oh, guy. Oh, uh, Matt, I, Matt Boy- Boylan, yeah. I was pretty sure he was controlled opposition. He was he was acting very irrationally in his videos, which indicated he was just trying he, to he, attach crazy. I thought he was it, attaching it, crazy to, I, I, to the thought. I, I initially was was suspect too, but I actually I actually spoke with him. And uh, oh, did you? He called me. Yeah, oh, did you? Because yeah, I reached me. out to him and he ignored me, which I guess is easy to do. But still, I I think he's trying to build, and rightly so. Um, he he was looking for some sort of catalyst in this movement because he never really backed away from it. You know, he's yeah. The problem with him is, you know, I I love the 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 the, the interview that his girlfriend did on him. You know, it took like twenty something minutes and where he broke everything down and it was really stone cold. Did like, I miss very, that? Look up. Um, if you're, think... if you're looking on screen, look up YouTube. It's on YouTube. Uh, NASA Insider. He'll be like the third one down, the fourth one down. He's he's sitting on a couch. Okay. And, and it's a re- it's a repost from a guy named Eric Dubay, who's also yeah. into the flat earth. Okay. Movement. Yeah, and Eric Dubay. Watch that from beginning huh? to end because that's that's really his 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 gemstone. Okay, because Eric Dubay was doing okay stuff, but. It wasn't enough to move me, whereas yours yeah. is, yours just so blew me out of the water. Thank you. I I looked at Eric's. I looked at, at Matt's. I looked at Kella Jagia, whatever that guy Caligula. was. Uh, my pers- my perspective is a good one, although you've got to you've got to know some physics to to get around that one. Um, and Cesar, he's got some good stuff. Mm. But but looking at Matt's straight up video, where you know not the arty stuff, because remember he's an artist by trade. He is an eccentric, passionate guy. But he says he's part one. of NASA, and there's no such thing as ex-military in my mind. Once mm. you're in, you're in. Nobody yeah, but, gets but, out. But, but, yeah, but he was a contractor. He was a uh, he was an artist contractor. But aren't there non-disclosures think... and everything to sign? Uh, but he didn't name names. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't want to. We could go on about that one. But but check out if you if you haven't listened to it, check out you I'm know the, the one where he, where he where he's sitting on the couch. It's brilliant. Yeah, I see. Um, I got it queued up here. Um, you're I think this is it. Can you hear that? These yep, days yep, with that's your the one. NASA that must be channel. recent. Yeah, NASA took out NASA. Took well, no, it's a recent repost. But that interview that mm-hmm. he did was years ago. Oh. Okay. When and and he tried to do it on film because he was worried because basically the story. Do you know anything about that? You know the his backstory on that one. How the- no, I, I just I always thought he was controlled opposition. He's just spinning crazy to he, this whole his, idea. His original his original interview, in my in my opinion, is just brilliant, and 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 it gets a lot of hits, you know, on a lot of mirrors. This is where he's and walking around and on the on the earth. Oh the- yeah, again, he's a performance artist. Okay, and, and he's a stand up comedian, and you know, but he's not different funny. languages. Plus, he's French. <laughs> Okay, he's not so, funny though, but okay, he's a comedian. Okay. All right. Anyway, he's 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 actually a pretty good guy, but total passion. But the thing is, I don't think I think in the in, you know he wasn't really a conspiracy guy. He was just a, you know he was just a painter. Okay. And the back the backstory on him is is that um, he was he was a contract painter you know out of Montreal you know for NASA did some stuff and then was invited out to like a like a, a social gathering out in the Hamptons. Um, there was a, there was a power outage and everyone's talking. It's late and there's some high ranking NASA guys there. Jesus. And the readers the readers digest version of this is they were joking about GPS. Right. How that how the GPS wouldn't work, um, you know, uh, at a certain point in Antarctica, mm-hmm. right? And then one of the you know tech guys says, you know, oh yeah, you should send a team a team of guys out there to to, to confirm that. And then mm-hmm. another guy chimes in and says. Well, if they go out that far, they're not coming back. And, you know, Matt, of course, you know, because he's clueless at the time, he goes, why wouldn't they come back? 
He goes, it's too cold. He goes, well, because GPS doesn't work out there. Mm-hmm. And why isn't it work out there? And, and then, you know, the, the dreaded, you know, deadpan moment where the guy goes, well, because it's flat. Mm-hmm. And, then, and, you know, and, and it's this gag, right? And, but it really, what it looked like was it was the, you know, are you in or are you out? You know, type mm-hmm. of conversations like, and so this guy, you know, under candlelight because you know it was a power outage, draws this big circular map and draws out all the continents, and you know, defines all this different stuff. And and you know, if you, I don't know how old he was, he was probably in his early twenties because he just graduated from uh, college. Yeah, he wasn't. You ready know, for he, that. He, no, he wasn't. And and you're if you're not a conspiracy guy, and someone drops this on you, <laughs> it's like <laughs> and whoa. You're an art, Whoa, yeah, what, yeah. What do you what do you do? You're you know not you know you're pretty open minded because you're a painter anyway and an artist, but you're you that that shakes you. I mean, really shakes you. So you either go one way or the other. Yeah. Either okay, you're you're in, but if you're not in, you're totally going to go the other way. Yeah. So um, eventually, you know, contacts dropped off, and then this is all in the interview. You can watch it, but the basically what he was saying was. You know, after this guy, when he when he drew it, because you know he knows how things are drawn, he goes. He basically drew the UN flag on on the concrete, right. and he goes. They never. He goes. They never backed off of that. He goes. They never came back. You know, it wasn't like you know nudging and winking and saying, "Oh yeah, we're just you know messing with you." They never ever came back. He goes. It was never a, a, a globe again. And so at that point, he started, you know, analyzing everything that was ever, you know, printed and, you know, started looking at earth shots and stuff like that. But it was, it's a great interview. I, I highly recommend it. Well, I'm going to watch it. I got it queued up. It'll be on my next audio uh, that I'm listening to. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought he was a goof, but you telling me that it's not a goof. No, is, no, is, he's is not, a, he's not a goof. Unfo- he, uh, unfortunately, he's a, he's a fault against himself in this, in this case, because, He's got that. He's got that one interview, which which his girlfriend did, which is again I, I consider it just brilliant. But he's got so many other videos where he's doing, you know, he's just going off on just tears, you know, just, you know, and, and it's tough. It's tough to listen to sometimes because again, you know, he's he's passionate. But that's the grounding one. You'll understand when you see it. It's uh, that's that's where he gets, you know, that's that's the fan base right there, you know, from from this sector is is just particularly that one video. He's got some others, you know, or I think he's been drinking a little bit. But, uh, but, yeah. Anyway, that's my take. One of your best videos that I just, I, I was, I was sort of gasping at air. I think was Shell Beach, which is oh, you like Slatter's Shell Beach? Shell Beach? I think is that the one where you describe the cage that were the mice in a cage? It starts off with yeah. mice in a cage. Yeah, that is so good because that <laughs> has the psychological <laughs> aspect to it. It's so good that that Thank was just you. oh that I, I one hit me really open, hard i didn't want to and you know each of them seems to hit people a little differently but yeah. that one that one i had fun with because i didn't want to open with the obvious truman show reference because it's too easy yeah i love that movie I, I, <laughs> uh, yeah i tried i tried to step people into Flatter. it so yeah. so i said okay look you gotta you gotta put you gotta put yourself in you know a, a situation it's like okay here's what happens with nature Here's what happens with people, and then you know and that one then blended into um, uh, status quo, which was really talking about you know because people say, well, why would they hide it? And it's like, well, <laughs> they'd hide it for you know some really big reasons. But the at the end, of- is that where you discuss the problem of humans figuring out that there's the wall, and then well, well you brought in the whole unity, which. Uh, of religion, yeah, which, yeah, which the, comes the in with the big the religious cons- unity problem, which you know science, that's prophesized. It, uh, the religious yeah. people prophesize that, and they they, they, will, they go on it, about all that. That it, yeah, and and I'm not knocking it. You know, I, I tried to stay as neutral as I could because you no, know, I know you're not spots. knocking it, but that's you're you're tying in a lot of strings that I see out there in the community, the conspiracy community. I think. Because they they think that the the Pope is going to be made the head of the entire world religion in Jerusalem when they knock off, when they reconstruct the Temple of Solomon, which is where there's a mosque right now in Jerusalem, and they're yeah, doing it yeah. now. They're buying the land. The Vatican owns Jerusalem. I mean, the whole it it is almost going to a script according to a and, script. 
That's strange because I, that's not even what I, you know, when I was writing it, I, I had, didn't have that in my mind at all. It was strictly from a reactionary point of view. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, look, I said, every religion is looking for the artifact. Yeah. You know, they're looking, they're looking for proof. Everyone wants it. And, and they have for hundreds of years. It's like, look, everyone wants to see the Holy Grail and, and, the, yeah. um, and art, this art wall the and you, you call the wall if, the really, yeah. If the wall shows up, if the wall is discovered or disclosed or whatever, yeah. you know, or shown to be the, true. Yeah. Everybody will jump on this and they will say design. It was built. It was built. It was built. And religion will take a huge jump. You know, they will, you know, it would, it, they would become, you know, instantly overnight, you know, it would be a, a, a fundamental shift. in Because people will need an explanation. They're not going to get it from Obama. No, no. And again, yeah, which is why, and I wasn't kidding. People, some people said, well, you're kind of doing a parody at the end. It's like, no, I, I'm not. Because, you know, you're going to go to science and ask them about the wall, and they're not going to have a clue. They're not going to be able to, well, you know, they may make up something. But they, but they won't even care because religion is going to come back and say, you know, I'll, I'll use Christianity, you know, just for, for the heck of it. And they'll say the firmament, it's in Genesis. It was there. That's what we believe for 4,000 years. And science made us lock it away in a drawer. But do you think there may be 10% of scientists that know all this stuff, but they're too afraid to say anything because it goes against uh, their group I wouldn't think? think- no, no, I wouldn't say 10% because, remember, you, you know anything with military, it's need to know. Yeah, um, compartmentalized. You know, I, would, I, would, I would even go so far, someone asked me, you know, does Neil deGrasse Tyson know? You know yeah, but the, there's got to be some smart people. Like, my uncle's really smart, and I don't talk about any of this stuff with him. He's really smart. He must know some of this stuff, but he would never talk about it because he's probably afraid or he doesn't think I'm smart enough to receive it. He must they know might, some of this but, stuff. But, but it's not just intelligence. Intelligence is yeah. one thing. You've got you've to have a leap of faith because yeah. like, you, like you and me, I mean, there's a, even when I was looking at it, even when I was researching it, you know, and, and the stuff was in front of me, I was going, this is stupid. This is, there's no way this can, this can be true, right? Yeah. And, you know, for a scientist... You know, <laughs> with so much doctrine, so many books they've digested over the years. You know, so, yeah. it, it, it goes it goes against everything we've been we've been led to believe on on all fronts. And so, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, some scientists may may question it. Yeah, you, there might be some, but you know, like you just said, they'd be so scared to say anything about it. Yeah, and I like how you said there was one or two people that would get it, understand, but what do you do with a thousand? They need something better than just oh yeah the explanation. Yeah. That's so right, and I think I experience that every day when I try and say, listen, 9-11 was a, wasn't just an inside job. It was a completely managed event. You have no idea the scope and depth that the military yeah. goes to control your reality. And the thousand people are never, ever going to believe it. And that is who the people that create our reality are pitching to. They don't care about us because we're too few and we'll never catch on and they know it. They yeah. know it. Yeah. They're yeah. always yeah, good... preaching to the, whatever you call it, the heathen masses, the the, yeah. the oh, great the unwashed. Mouth, mouth, mouth-breathing troglodytes? Yeah. yeah, the mouth-breathing troglodytes. <laughs> and I breathe it, yeah. I breathe it out of my mouth at night because my nose plugs up. But I'm not, you know. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm hoping, well, you know, and of course, yeah, if, if the wall was, remember, because in my opinion, the, you can't keep something like this under wraps forever, and they know that. So the question is, what do you do? If to manage it, it. Gaining, yeah, I mean, do you try to manage it? Do you try to create a giant distraction that that takes away from it? You know, be it a, a world conflict or a disease, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, whatever you want. You know, it's it's one of two choices. You either let it happen, you you know, let this thing happen and and let the shift happen, which you know, I would think they they wouldn't do. The great um, reset, or, I've heard. The Great Reset. Someone was talking about that on some forum just recently. Yeah, I yeah. Said, what the, are you yeah, talking about? I, and, great and reset. Me, it's like, Part part of these videos were not just for me, you know, or not just for us, you know. It's for I, let's let's be honest, it's for the builders themselves. It's like, look, you guys are waiting for something. I don't know what it is because, in my opinion, civilization has jumped the shark. And they yeah, did you it called it ago. the um, what did you call it? You called it the authority, the authority, as if it's um instead of the authorities or the ruling classes or whatever you want to call them, the Council of Three Hundred, the Thirteen Ruling Families. You could, you just call it the authority. I call it the authority because it is 
in my, you know, because it's a quick way of saying, you know, because you know full well, it's not just rich people, you know, not just the highly elite or highly, um, you know. Yeah, it's uh, not just the Masons, the Jews, the Jesuits, no, the council, the CFR, um, the nutwork, we've called it the nutwork. But you, the I like the authority, but that almost gives well, them too you. much credit. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> technically, it, it may be their self-imposed title. I don't necessarily say that it's the ultimate. I don't... For me, it's the authority, whereas the other, you know, I, the others are the builders or the creators, you know, mm-hmm. depending on which tack you want to take there. Yeah. But uh, but for me, it's like you know, the the authority can. There's only so many moves they can make, and if I was them, I would think I would try some. I would stage some sort of event so that if even if they knew that you know the dome was you know or whatever, the enclosed world was going to be discovered or breached or whatever it was. Um, they would they would either take credit for it, you know, and try to man, you know, try to spin it a certain way, or they would create something so distracting on the other side that uh, that people would be too busy to care. Do you realize that even when you use the word "them," when I speak yeah. to people and I say "they," I always get "Who's they?" There's nobody. There's no "they." There's no <laughs> "them." Why do you keep saying that? You, that's of course I can't get anywhere. They. I can't even get the first sentence out. He says, "Why are you saying them? Who's the, who are they? Who is them?" <laughs> Point to them. Where no, do they live? Where is their head no, office? <laughs> it's funny because it's it's you know they think of it as an ultimate them, but but you know if you even even where we are, if you raise up like I was a president of my HOA for years, and mm-hmm. we were the HOA was referred to as them, you know because the What's HOA, an HOA was, was, high school. Oh no 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 um, uh, homeowners association. Oh okay. So, uh, so so and and we were the ones that made up the rules and and stuff yeah. for for a particular condo association. Okay, I get so it. So when so when and but people re- hated that because we were considered, you know, it was like why are they making the rules? Blah blah blah. You know that. Meanwhile, so we were, no. Meanwhile, they all, you always get in by acclamation because nobody else wants to run, right? No, <laughs> nobody wants to run. It's right. not a paid position. It's, yeah, it's, of course not. Anyway, the, the, yeah, you're absolutely right, though. You know, yeah. the, the stigma of they and them is 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 uh, the, you know it's it's such an overreaction on people's part because yeah. they don't they don't buy. But it's like it's like well, of course they are. You know, we, we you know they started out like just you know so some, some of them started out just like us. Mm-hmm. So don't say there isn't them because you one day may be them. So don't. Right. I haven't know. been called yet, by the way. I am waiting for the phone call. What? Fo- oh, the, for the, to be the them. phone call to switch over. Switch over to switch over from criticizing them to joining them because I'm. Oh, oh, that's right, that's right. Because initially I thought you were you were actually one of them already. No, no. I'll, hey, listen. I don't know yeah. if I think I'm doing a well. My services are free uh, to yeah. them, and I'm I'm helping them realize how their message is filtering down. So I'm far more useful over here than being paid on their side to convince the. Uh, the open mouth troglodytes, what to do? <laughs> so nice. I'm pretty, sh- I'm pretty sure that that's a good reason why we're not really in danger. Because I think we are, we're the one percent of the one percent of the one percent that can can get that get the message. We we're getting the signal. We're getting the bat signal down here. We're yeah. We do the Rubik's cubes. We're the ones that figure it out, and um, they just want to know if a million of us are going to figure it out or not. And yeah. I'm pretty sure, and, and I think there's even a yeah. contingency for that because oh, you, know, sure, yeah. you, you know, you know the term predictive programming, yeah, you know, more probably more than anybody. But there was stuff I'd noticed, you know, over the last ten, fifteen years, which you know, it's like, well, you got to kind of warm up to the idea anyway. So yeah, Dark City, that was kind of iffy. Truman Show, everybody knows that. I got to uh, watch Dark City. Yeah, I, the television, I Dark City is a wonderful movie. I got to watch um, that. The, yeah, that's the nice. television series, The Dome. Um, the Simpsons movie, where the city was under a dome. Uh, the movie that was just out just recently, uh, The Signal, which just came out on video. Uh, watch that out. The ending uh, is a city. It's kind of a spoiler, but the city was actually inside a, a, a flying dome. Okay, that's The Signal? Okay. Oh, that's The awesome. Signal. Check that out. Uh, okay. It, you know, it, there's there's certain certain things that, that you know, for, for me, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's got to be tough for them. And I use them again. Yeah. Then because this is a topic that you know it's it's hard to hard to reach. Did you, by the way, if you get a chance, uh, look up on YouTube if you did, if you missed it, the fact that the fact that I think it was just last year that Obama, <laughs> in that press conference on the White House lawn, mm-hmm. said we don't have time for meetings with the Flat Earth Society. 
Well, I've heard, and, I've, I've seen that clip. As yeah, a, and uh, I was like yeah. going, I was going, what? You, well, you know, that's not an off the cuff remark. You know, that's built into the speech. You know, a long, you know, long time prior. And it's like, why would you mention that? Why would you even talk about it? Yeah, this it's is like, it. you know, broadly, could, we've got to move beyond partisan politics on this issue. Bingo. I want to be clear. I am willing to work with anybody. Republicans, Democrats, independents, libertarians, greens, anybody to combat this threat on behalf of our kids. I'm open to all sorts of new ideas, maybe better ideas, to make sure that we deal with climate change in a way that promotes jobs and growth. Yeah, I just thought flat, a monopoly on what is a flat Earth society was but just too. I don't too. have much patience for anyone who denies that this challenge is real. Oh. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. There you go. Now, yeah, that, and that's interesting because before, you, what was it, like 40 seconds before, he says, yeah. we're willing to meet with anybody. And then he except, follows it up, except meeting with the Flat Earth Society. <laughs> it's like, all right. It, does, I mean, is it possible that they can, you know, whatever algorithms that Did that come up in a meeting with him, for, perhaps? And maybe. Uh, yeah, he, it's like, hey, we're, we're getting some trace, you know, some trace traction on a yeah. topic. So here we want to we want to throw this in there. Yeah, we need the actor it. in chief to um to to start creating negative propaganda. Yeah. So that yeah, way, anyone who no, yeah, there's yeah. no because for a lot of people, you know, they don't even know. You know, it's not like you know the the flat Earth thing. The, the, it's not that the for some people it doesn't mean uh, a bad thing. It means nothing because they don't even know the term. Anyone under so sixty you, wouldn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. it, there's an entire generation that, that that has no idea about the flat earth. Maybe the flat earth side is kind of making a tiny, weeny, teeny, eeny, weeny comeback because of the internet. But otherwise, yeah. no. Or because of I've, – I've thrown it out that I don't know what the hell we're standing on or sitting on or spinning on. And why are all the numbers – that uh, NASA gives for the Earth. Uh, why are they all Masonic? Why are we going 11,000 kilometers or miles an hour? Why isn't it some other... And how do they get these even numbers? I mean, it just, to me, the whole thing is BS. Yeah. The whole... It's all, it's all a kooky story with all their occult numbers just slapping us in the face every single day, uh, starting off for me with 9-11. After 9-11, nine, yeah. after I just... I make that the, the focus of my blog only because everyone on the planet knows about it. They know something about it so they can relate yeah. to it. I just use it as a springboard. And it goes... The fakery, the hoaxery, the control goes right down to the dumbest, stupidest stories in my hometown, Toronto, where they say some guy dug a hole and... I know they're just testing the believability or the gullibility rather of the public into believing some of the dumbest, stupidest, <laughs> occult-laden numerology, gematria yep. stories. I mean, it's crazy, but people are just so dumb overall. They are. They are. But, uh, you know, with, with a little little hope and, you know, um, you know, maybe, maybe we can change that, hopefully. <laughs> well, yeah, you're okay. your video. I mean, this is the... This I well let, let me ask you one thing. How did you get the title? Where'd you get the clues part of it? Because I'll tell you why I want to know. Why did you um, call it Flat just, Earth Clues? I just rolled with it. Um, the initial, the initial, you know, the first one was the uh, Guide to the Flat Earth, okay. and that was more. Um, you, that could have been a subliminal thing, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I suppose. But yeah. it was really, but it was really, that was literally what I was trying to do. It was like, you know, because there's all sorts of stuff. Guide to, you know, yeah. the pyramids. Guide to this. So that was that. But then the clues, that the, the clues, the, the titles of all the clues just came as I was writing them. It was weird. I would wake up in the night and, and you know, and I'd say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to, because I rolled them out really one day after. They all, I did the first um, I did the guide and the first eight clues, you know, one day after another, you know, I'd, I'd wake up in the morning, I'm going, okay, here's how we're going to do it. And we're going to, you know, write the script, do the audio, do the slides, put it all together, shoot it out. And as I was writing the script, by the time I was usually about halfway through it, I, I came up with, you know, whatever the clue name was. Well, I'll tell you why, because the movie, the website that blew the doors off 9-11 was yeah. the very famous... September Clues movie. I don't know if you've I heard did, about it. I have not. Se- I have not heard about it, nor have seen it. But well, I that's a, that, that that's pretty good um, synergy there, where we've got yeah. an artist on the other side of the planet. Um, 
in Rome, Simon Schack, who created September Clues and the foremost forum for this kind of chatter, including, well, maybe not so much Flat Earth, is cluesforum.info. So when I saw Flat Earth Clues, I thought, is this is this guy giving paying homage to September Clues in any way? No, is it a quinky dink? <laughs> I would say no, no, not at all. In fact, I was a loose change guy. Ah, I was. I followed the loose change series. Well, that's um, where you're supposed to go first. It's laid yeah, out. Yeah, and that's and that's all I really knew. You know, okay. for a while there, and so um, that that's really the, you know it didn't take much convincing for me with the whole nine eleven thing. But no, I didn't even know. So the guy, the guy's not even an American, and he did this. That's right. He's a wow. Swedish or Norwegian born. Living in Rome, Italy. He speaks wow. five languages. He speaks English quite well. I've done many interviews with them. Um, yep. Most of the people that I respect in most of the hoax fake research is on are on cluesforum.info, which includes Americans, Irish. Irish seem to be pretty up on this. I think mainly because they've been beaten down by the British for so long. I think oppressed people are more sure more willing to try and seek answers because they pretty much want to get out from underneath whatever's yeah. oppressing trust, them. Trust. Yeah, trust yeah. doesn't come easy for them. Yeah, yeah, trust doesn't come easy, so they're more skeptical. Yeah. I mean, but uh, yeah, it's out, there's supposed to be allegedly 330, 33, which is another whole story about occultism and gematria, 100, yeah. 330 million Americans. Why did it take an Italian... To figure this out, that bo- not even doesn't even speak English. I mean, it, it good just, point. And, and the loose change stuff almost didn't come out. You know, Boeing, um, Boeing threatened to sue the loose change guys on their first. Well, um, I, the first I think that's. I, I I don't have much doubt at this point that that's all controlled opposition. I mean, after all, Vladimir Lenin said the best, the only way to control the opposition is to lead it. I think that they. There's no doubt that it's part of all major media, military media psyop hoaxes is they manage the opposition. So that was a controlled leak, just uh-huh. like when they release water from a dam. They don't just blow the dam up and let it flow out. It's released carefully to relieve any kind of tension, pressure, growing opposition. So, so forgive me, but that is why I'm skeptical about just about anything that comes out. In, sure. uh, any, and in any fashion. And, and when people question me, I can't I can't say listen. I didn't I told you to question everyone, so how can I exclude myself? It's kind of ridiculous in a way and and people do take me up on that and question me all the time. So, but I'm okay with that. And I think the more talking I do and radio interviews, people can tell that it's pretty hard to fake what I'm doing, I think. It's pretty Agreed. hard to be disingenuous all the time. Agreed. Right. And and yeah. and uh so but anyway, I thought that was uh, some pretty amazing synergy. Yes, if you haven't watched it, definitely watch September yeah, Clues. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's just so I know, it's September 11th Clues? It's just called September Clues. Clues. It's okay. on my website, fakeologist.com. You can link, there's a link to the top, but it's, you'll find it oh, quite perfect, easily yeah. on YouTube. Um, it's not quite as polished as yours, and there's no narration. So because there's no narration there's mostly just text and arrows and freeze frames that are trying to make you think about what you're looking at it's very powerful that way uh it almost needs an explanation and that's why i discussed the the video with the creator simon shack and that's why i also needed to go to the clues forum and read okay what exactly is being said here what is the thesis in case i'm interpreting it incorrectly Whereas Perfect. yours is very clear, your I mean your arguments are very clear, they're very <laughs> persuasive, and I, I I have to admit though I, I did um, have an, I, uh, sort of an unfair advantage there because I used to do um, uh, training classroom training for proprietary software okay. when I was when I was doing stuff for um, time and attendance. I was going to ask, so you must have had all the software slide presentation syncing of the well, audio actually, to the that, that stuff i mean it, it you know i kind of pasted that together but but the whole concept of um you know because for years i would train people on you know basically the basic you know taking complex stuff and breaking it down to where you know it, they could they could really understand it to where it would really drive home you know and, and it didn't take very long you know they wouldn't you know have these gaps where they'd fall asleep 
And so when I was doing this, it, for whatever reason, it just came very, very naturally. And, um, you know, I was surprised again, you know, the worst conspiracy of all time. <laughs> and, you know, here I am now, you know, not only believing it, but preaching it. So no, it's, to, uh, you, you've, the, 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 let me just ask you a couple more questions. I made a lot of notes, sure. but, but I didn't think I was going to talk to you tonight. But uh, no, no, a lot fine. of the notes I, I just wrote as we we're talking. So we've got nine video clues plus one plus introductory digest or guide at the beginning. Yep. So does that yep. mean there'll be more clues, maybe even 11 clues to... Uh, to as, the, <laughs> as I get inspired, yeah. yeah. Um, the next the next videos probably won't be clues. They'll probably be uh, um, um, just a, a radio thing, you know, because I'm going gonna, gonna to record the radio thing and, and break it up into chunks. Okay. But, well, you're doing a radio, but, an audio version, you mean? Or? Uh, no, no. Well, yeah, there's um, uh, uh, All Talk All Talk Radio has um, tracked me down because this stuff's only been up. You got to remember, as of it's three weeks as of today, yeah, <laughs> and it's even been up. Yeah. So after the first week, I had um, this radio show call me, and and they were the ones that kind of prompted me into, well, kind of motivated me to finish up number nine. Oh, okay. Uh, but but for me, it's like, and and I knew I was doing some good stuff because I hit everyone with so many things, so you know, so many different angles that when they're coming back, I'm not even really getting that many suggestions for um, for the next clues. You know, of course yeah. everyone has, you know, about little things here and there. But but for me it's like it's gotta it's gotta inspire me. You know, I've gotta I've gotta really get behind it to to you know, it's gotta it's gotta roll. And so little things, you know, I'm not I'm I'm probably not gonna touch on. I'm looking for like I, I mentioned in the videos, I'm looking for the gaps, the stuff that, that people seem to miss. You know like the like the movie thing that you know, I can't believe I'm the only one that's ever posted anything on it. So it's like, right, you know, you could I could kill the the the, the space program in two words: no movies. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's that's for me one of the easiest things to do. But um, we'll see, we'll see how the clues go. I'm I'm hoping to do more. Uh, I just I just need little a few more angles, and uh, you know, I, it took me about a week to crack the plane thing. So you know, who knows what I'll do next. Are you are you teaming up at all with some of the other leading people that are discussing all this, or, or you don't you don't uh, need collaboration? They're, they're trying they're trying to team up with me apparently. Yeah, I'm um, sure. Uh, Maybe you don't the, need that. Well, I don't. I that's fine. If they want, they're apparently they're trying to put together a documentary. Get some I think you just and, did. Well, yeah, I know, but I mean a full blown. <laughs> it's sort of a. It's I, I don't want to give it away, but they're going to yeah. try to do a. a you know. A subtle thing where you're talking to more, you know, more than just me, you know, other people, you know, that have been kind of toying with this and how it's kind of getting out there and how basically how the technology has gotten to a point where there's there's flaws that are showing up. Uh-huh. You know, there's things that you can't hide, uh, you know, the most obvious being the flights, you know, the, the fact that, that the map doesn't seem right because there's enough electronic stuff that you're getting conflicting information. Uh-huh. And uh, that that for me is the most damning of all. It's like, look, you, you know, again, you know, it's a it's a great it's a great stopgap what they did, you know, killing off the GPS for the Southern hemisphere, mm-hmm. but you can't, you can't hold that forever. You can't, it's not, um, it's not feasible. Um, well, the only thing you know, that's really different is that I think, and that's, uh, it's a great hope, but a great worry at the same time is that now we have a way of collaborating almost instantly. This would take yeah. probably quite a long time. If you tried to release this traditionally, just passing oh, yeah. out DVDs. No studio would touch this with a ten foot uh, barge. Pole. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, now, no. So now we have some synergy. I'm talking about it. There'll be a lot of other people talking about it. We can try and collaborate. Um, sure. I mean, if, we're not going to go wanted... charter ships and go different directions uh, in the, the South NASA Pacific. Channel, that's exactly. The NASA Channel actually wants to charter ships, so that's a whole other thing. Well, but, but yeah, if you if you want to, because those ships are never going to go anywhere. Yeah, the um, you're not getting any. They'll go near. where they want them to go. <laughs> exactly, they will steer you. Yeah, you're not. They'll steer not you nowhere. Right. Exactly, over a cliff. Um, but if you if you ever want to, you know, you if you ever want me to be in on anything, you know, if you want to do a project, I again, you know, I've only been doing this. I've been in the conspiracy thing for years, but the flat Earth thing probably less than nine months, and then I had my you know my Jerry Maguire moment three month, three weeks ago, where he said, "Okay, I'm telling everybody." <laughs> Yeah, I'll right, talk no. about this so. to the cows going home because this is this is one of the harder puzzles to solve, and I think we need all the greatest minds, and I think some of the greatest minds helped expose the nine eleven, uh, JFK, and, and 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 it's, and it's yeah. worth it. Which 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 to me, it's like, look, 
you know, coming from me, you know, who absolutely thought this thing was a dead joke or, or a religious, you know, uh, extreme arm of, of, of religion, you know, all the religions, I, I, there was no way, there was no way this thing was going to be real. And I'm, I, um, I'm telling you, man, by the time I got to the end of it, it was like, there was no doubt in my mind. It was like, not only is it real, but it's, um, but it's very close to being uh, discovered on a, on a mass basis. Well, yeah, I think the ball, though, was on the one-yard <laughs> line, and you just moved it halfway across the field, right, with this, this series, honestly. Um, the, 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 the ball was in danger of being kicked back into the, the end zone, if you want to use a football analogy. You just moved it way down the field now. Now they're going to have to just push back really hard. Um, yeah, but, which, which in itself is ridiculous because the government, even addressing this from, from a perspective, professional standpoint is 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 isn't it the most ludicrous thing you ever heard of it's like you would spend money to try to try to squash the flat earth thing why would why would you do that because it's, it's a joke it's it's not it's not serious well it is so now you got to address it but the, even then even just addressing it you know unless you're going to lock me up somewhere you know is is going to raise eyebrows you know, because it's it's one of those topics that is so it's because it's, one, it's not the United States. You know, it's it's global. You know, it's not like you're you're questioning national security or anything like that. This is way bigger. This the you know for me, it's the last it's the last conspiracy. There's, yeah, there's no, 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 there's a there's a bunch of things that I'm not sure I can agree with. I'm not sure in the video that that necessarily have to go with the flat Earth. For instance, I was I was getting concerned when we started talking about the dome. And I also was curious because a couple images, the images you put on the, in the video, had the flat Earth on some kind of pedestal. So I was worried. Well, what's underneath the pancake? Yeah, or, well, yeah I, most most of those know. were old religious interpretations. Oh, okay. And and as far as creating the dome, I, I didn't want to. You can't have it spread out forever when you're when you're trying to explain it to people because people need. They want some sort of compartmentalization. You know, they want, it's like, okay, you know, they want the beginning and the end of the movie. They want, you know, some sort of space in between that they can get their head around. Yeah. So for me, it's like, okay, we'll start with the dome. And if it's bigger than that or if it's weirder than that, you know, we can go from there. But does there have really to be just, a dome, though? I don't even know if there has to be a dome. There doesn't have to be a dome, but it makes it easier if it is. What's it you made know, because, of? And who? Who? Where, where, how, how much do the window cleaners get to clean it? I, I nice, want that contract. Nice. And who? And who's the maintenance crews? And, yeah. And are they, yeah. Are they where, flying around? In, where's the rope? Spaceship. <laughs> where's the rope? Nice. You know? By the way, the uh, the document uh, the documentary uh, guys. I was throwing out suggestions because um, you know uh, they you know, they're thinking of doing stuff, and and one that has kind of been buzzing around was um, uh, the title of the documentary was to be Flat Club. Mm-hmm. And that is, you know, the first rule of Flat Club is that you do not talk about Flat Club. Yeah. And 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 that really was kind of rang true because, you know, this is one of those topics where is, you know, <laughs> you try to talk, tell people, how do, you, how do you broach the subject? I think Flat you know, Earth uh, is equivalent to conspiracy theory. And that's why I created the, the word, well, I adopted the word fakeology because it doesn't have <clears throat> any negative connotations quite yet yeah. i'm sure it will i'm sure they'll yeah. tar and feather it but i created fakeologist because you have to think about what it means you might actually question what it's all about and if i just tell you it's a study of media fakery and hoaxes then you're not going to have a a given thought for it because as we know all our thoughts are pretty much given to us or controlled we don't sure. really have any original thoughts. Most people don't. So at Flat yeah. Earth, I think that phrase has been tarred and feathered, and it's just about as big a pejorative or put-down as you can get. You almost have to try and figure out a different set of words to describe what you're exactly. trying to. Yeah. Exactly. I was, I, you know, flat on its own seems to do okay as long as you don't combine flat and earth. Because yeah. It's um, because you're absolutely right. It's it's no different than the globe. It goes hand in hand, and that is, oh well, obviously I was I was raised on a globe, therefore flat Earth people must be absolutely insane. You know, yeah. And they they actually go out and buy tin for tin hats, and but people don't understand that 
that even in conspiracy, that's that, of course, again, you know, for me is is the is one of the dead giveaways, and that is even in the conspiracy world, flat Earth is considered crazy. Yeah, that's and, right. And it's like, well, it's like, wait a minute, which is why I kind of briefly touched on. It. I said, look, there's people, you know, I I know people that will will say, look, every one of the major world leaders are are lizards. And yeah. I will say, hey, let me tell you about the flat Earth, and they'll just laugh. And they'll laugh. <laughs> it's like, and it's like, really, really, seriously, you're in a costume right now. You know, you're dressed up as a Roswell alien, and you're laughing at me. Well, they are but, actors. Uh, that much, I'll, I think most people can sort of agree with. They're actors. They're given their words. Oh, sure, that sure, kind sure. Of but thing. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're not shape shifting Jew lizards, or yeah, yeah that. There you go. It, it, the, the flat earth has gotten such, I mean, you know, it was, again, one of the reasons I jumped in is it's, they've been kicked around for so long. And when I looked at it, I think it was more of an injustice thing than anything else. It's like, you know what? They have no reason to be kicked around. Yeah. If anything, they've got more credibility now than, than a lot of stuff. And some of the other stuff dove, dovetails into it. So, you and know, if someone can disprove you, I think you'll be open to it, right? Okay. Oh, absolutely. Come, I am come, waiting. come disprove if, me. Yeah. Tell me I'm yeah, I'm right. wrong. I, Show me. But yeah, that's I, my phone number, email address. It's all here. Uh, you know, I'm still waiting. I've gotten tons of emails and tons of phone calls in the last three yeah. weeks. And and, and, and that's uh, why I thought it was interesting because Simon Shack at Clues Forum, September Clues, has done the same thing. He's got all his personal details out there. He says, "Hey, call me any time, but just don't call yeah. me crazy." Yeah. If you got something yeah, to say. And, just say it, and we'll get through it, and I'll tell you why. This is why I think. And I don't think anyone's been able to challenge him off his position. That's why I promote his video and his way of thinking, because it's the best out there. And that's that's how I feel about your thing at the moment. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just saw the thing, but it just it hit me like a ton of bricks. I, I avoided <laughs> watching it for two days. Someone dropped uh, it in my and chat. And your response was, was like a lot of people. I, I've gotten so many emails that started with the words mind blown. Yeah. And it's like, and, yeah. and I say, hey, super cool. I, you know, it's not exactly what I was going for. I was really just trying to, trying to get, let people know. But again, the concept is mind blowing and on its, on its own. Yeah, it really supersedes just about all the stupid little plane crash hoaxes that we're going through on a daily basis, yeah. planes, trains, and automobile hoaxes, or just all the little nonsense. It's The little nonsense is more like noise. This is – what you've got is the big enchilada, and it's oh, – yeah. because yeah, it's the big yeah. one, it's going to be the hardest one uh, to get through. But gee yeah. whiz, if we're not spinning through, like you said, on this fireball through this on infinite a fireball, space. <laughs> space yeah if you can yeah you know for those out there you know yeah if you can get your if you can get your head around this just for 60 seconds it'll be totally worth it well anyone that listens to me knows they're lied to we're being lied to and we're all pretty much fooled on a daily basis and that and i've already gotten over that i say okay i you want you know you guys you guys won you, you fooled me i get it okay now i'm sure. i'm in awe for a few minutes what else are you lying about and i'm pretty happy with the fact that you're lying about nukes and that actually is a really great relief to me that was the biggest relief of all cuz i know you can't you can't divide or smash up this earth with the press of a button or a, or a, an yeah. elbow on a i'm okay i'm pretty happy with that now actually is yeah. it's, it's great news and now, now I know why the military controls everything uh, nuclear and and a lot of electricity too, for that matter. But um, this one you got, so I have no problem saying, "Hey, we're not on this spinning fireball." But I have no idea what we're on at this point. And your theory <laughs> placed a real good argument for the flat. I still want to know what's underneath this table we're standing on. What's on the other side? Is it all uh, mechanical, or is, uh-huh. are there little wheels spinning with elves uh, making <laughs> the grass come through the the earth? Uh, they push the uh, are they pushing the yeah, grass up? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm working on it, man. If there's if I can find a connection somewhere, I'll I'll let you guys know. But uh, right now, it's uh, for me. It's 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 really interesting because again, it's it's a bold move for for them or the authority or however you want to call it to you know to, to get a point sixty years ago where they said, you know what, we got to hide the world. <laughs> you know what sort of meeting was that like? You know, it's like how do we do it? How do we how do we hide the whole how do we hide the whole thing? And, yeah, uh, does Bird know? Yeah. Do you think he knows what's going on, or he had a good idea, or Bird, Mister Bird, Explorer Bird? Oh, oh, Richard E. Bird. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, he knew in the end. Of course he did. But in yeah. fact, he died in 1957, you know, a year after the uh, Operation Deep Freeze, you know, the last... Because you put uh, Neil Armstrong in, in your movie, and I was hoping you'd play the clip, uh, no, his no, last White I House gonna, clip. I didn't want to go down that too far. Everyone knows that one, you know, it's... Uh, but but but. All he uh, knew is he I, didn't go anywhere. That's all he knew, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, and I felt bad for Neil. Oh, he, uh, it's awful. He's, you know, it, it, you know, because again, these guys, you know, not to go off on a, a little tangent, but those guys were 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 going to be heroes. You know, that's what they signed up for. You know, this is it. We're going to be, we're going to be the guys. And then all this, you know, it's released to them. It's like, look, you're not going anywhere. Oh, <laughs> what a letdown! Not only that, but you got to keep your mouth shut. And some of them were good with it. Some of them weren't. Uh, and poor Neil, uh, he just was a wreck. You could just tell he was just a he was a mess. He was carrying it with him his whole life, and it was awful. But Bird knew, and he died in 1957, a year later. So if you're an optimist, um, then he died of closure, in my opinion. Because, you know, if you're the ultimate explorer and you reach the end of the world, <laughs> the thing that's not supposed to be there, you know, you know, his point is like, well, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> that's, that's all I got. But if you're a pessimist, well, you know where that goes. And that is, mm-hmm. you know, he'd already done a television interview and he likes talking on camera. Mm-hmm. So, you know, do you, do, you, do you shut him up that way or, or did he just die? I don't know. But either way, it worked out because, you know, he only had to know for a year. And then that was it. He was, he was and, and he was in his, I think he was in his 60s. So, you know, it was very possible. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I have, no, I have no doubt that not only did Bird knew, I think he was the first to know for sure. He yeah, confirmed he it. He, so he was the one that ran up against the wall. Yeah, he was the guy that got there, where, you know, whatever the border was, whatever the, was there against the, yeah, the, the thing that's not supposed to be there, he was the first to see it. He probably got there by plane, you know, and, and uh, you know, who, who knows, maybe even, you know, because he was a hell of a pilot, you know, he probably landed next to it, got out and said, I, I can't, even, it would be such a great movie shot because, you know, it's so epic. It's so huge, and 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 it's there. And and again, you know, at that point, it's so big that you don't know you don't know the extent of it. But mm-hmm. you know, there were some people that obviously knew. It's okay. Let's find out. You know, here's the outer edge. Let's find the upper edge. You start firing rockets up. You know, and you keep firing rockets for four years. You know, nukes. You know, whatever you want to call them. You know, mm-hmm. there were there were some explosives. Whatever. If it wasn't fission, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But I'm just going you know, with and, good old TNT. Or, I'm just there. Just, you go. I mean, just, yeah, either, I, yeah. E- there's either no way, but yeah. the the point was they had to they had to define what they considered to be the borders, and and then once they did, you know, coincidentally, you know, that's when uh, Stanley Kubrick, you know, started up his um, 2001 63. You know, that's when he started that project. Took five years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, which you know, if you believe the rumors, and I do, you know, that it was a complete you know research project was um, you know to find out what you could do, what you could fake on film. Sure. Well, and, yeah, uh, television was uh, probably a military tool created just oh, like yeah. Orwell had. Uh, he never predicted it. He was told what to write. I think he was just a change agent, uh, predictive programming, and the telescreen oh, yeah. wasn't, was... Wasn't he dead on? <laughs> Orwell yeah, I... was so dead on, even now. In fact, I just watched that a couple months ago. Yeah. Again, you know, I was like, wow. But I, he was... He, I, he, he... I think he... I think, yeah, go ahead. No, but I understand what you're saying. That yeah. you know, even that was was probably an op. But yeah, yeah, he was given the information to release as this science fiction. I think it's always put out to measure the acceptability, the gullibility, sure. and sure. okay, everyone's okay with that. Well, guess what? It took a little while. We're all walking around with telescreens now. We all have our info devices, tracking devices, and yep. our RFID chips are okay. They're not under our skin. They're in our hand right now. And yeah. uh, everything has gone digital, and everything's tracked, the money, everything, and they can turn you off. I mean, they can't turn you off, but hey, if you don't have money, a digital currency or a digital ID, which they could technically turn off, you're off. Mm-hmm. Go try and buy yeah. something with a phone that doesn't work uh, when there is no cash money. You'll have to give pieces of your body or barter uh, services and whatnot, like the old days. But, but You know, no, good good point. I mean, what better focus group than a focus group that doesn't know it's one? Yeah. You know, that's that's the best part. You know, so they're not in a room and saying, okay, we're going to show you some perfumes or these, you know, these yeah. new advertising slogans. You just put it out in the real world. And now, you know, it's, you know, not to go again on a rant, but now with social media, the focus groups are instantaneous. Yeah. You know, you can you can find out stuff, you know, by the minute, 
you yeah. know, what, what, and, and, oh, it's just We know fantastic. what you like. We know what you're thinking. Because you told us yeah. what you're thinking. We yeah, don't you have to go into your brain. You just wrote it. Thinking. I know that, that parody, and I hate to use it because, but, but I'm, I'm going to, yeah. uh, where the, the show The Onion did that thing, um, how the CIA had saved so much money because, because Facebook was invented. By them. And they're going, you yeah. know, these congressional hearings where the, the CIA couldn't thank Facebook enough for, for all this the only thing they, they forgot to say is they probably created slave book i like to call it or face oh, there you go yeah and uh, yeah, it, that's yeah, a pretty exactly. easy tool and uh yeah. Yeah. mark zuckerberg yeah. uh just got the lucky acting job to become the so-called face or creator yeah. just like bill gates and steve jobs there's nothing further from the truth in my mind these people were Put there, and the, 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 it's not even a dirty secret that the military controls the economy. Everyone yep. probably knows someone if they don't directly work for the military. So, yeah, all the money goes there. So, who the, who the hell do you think is behind all these big businesses and big ideas yeah. and media? I mean, stop it. It's not hard. You don't have to <laughs> even think hard about this stuff, right? Agreed. And I guess yep. every now and then, uh, a big mouth like me and perhaps you uh, get our word out. And um, I don't know if it, it has to be by design. And the, a lot of people that go over the top thinking, hey, nobody can speak unless they're allowed to speak. But on the yeah. other hand, the people that do squeak through, I think, can easily be managed and controlled in the sense that their message can be obscured or mollified in some way. So I suppose yeah. you're probably going to... Get some shows, yeah. and I think you're wise to turn off your comments because it just saves you endless oh, hours yeah, yeah, yeah. moderating. But which what is what I'm really waiting smart. for, and I'll know when I see it, are um, response videos. Yeah. Um, now, now, in truth, since I haven't called anybody out on anything, you know, mine, mine's very, very neutral. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't get any, but you know, it's you know, it's going to happen. It's, they're going to try to bait me, and I won't. I mean, I'm not taking it. So if somebody, you know, That's true. says, you know, this is a response to Mark Sargent's clues videos and goes into some sort of time. Yeah, you know what? That's probably where I make a mistake with my website because people can talk and chat and I get shilled to death and it, it keeps me <laughs> a little distracted. But I suppose I should be like a lot of other pretty great researchers and they just put their stuff out. No comments. Yeah. So you want to comment? Create your own blog and try and get some traffic to it. So it might yeah, be a wise yeah, or, move on or, your behalf. Or take my videos and mirror them and then torch them. You know, that, that'd be the easiest way to do it. You know, mm -hmm. just because I don't stop people. It's like, fine, repost my videos. Yeah. It makes no difference to me. You want to yell and, and, and tear each other up on a, on a different channel? Fine. Yeah, yeah. As fine. long as you guys... You're not going to do it on yet. mine. That's, in fact, it's funny because I turned off the comments, but I left my discussion page open. Right. And my discussion page wasn't even open three days, I think. And it got tore Some up. guy comes on there and he goes, and literally, it was just one line. He goes, only cowards don't allow, uh, you know, comments to be activated. Oh, right? well, I know and a certain like, person that says that on all of them. Yeah, there's certain yeah, people paid like, you know or what? not. Yeah. All I did was I turned off the discussion page entirely. <laughs> so yeah, even yeah. That, even that's not visible. So it's like, Or fine. some people because, again, will say... Well, you'll get more traffic if you have comments. Well, is that really the purpose to get traffic, or you just want to literally create a message that's pretty damn irrefutable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I don't. Yeah, no, I don't care. You know, traffic. Hey, fine, great. If it happens, it happens. Yeah. I'm not going to monetize it. I'm not yeah. going to do. I'm I'm handicapping myself deliberately yeah. to prove a point. It's like, look, you guys can try to call me whatever you want, but one, nobody's going to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, two, you're not going to be able to discuss it on anything. So if you're going to discuss it, you're going to have to go to your own forums. And then, you know, so, so I'm basically insulating myself to that, to that degree. And so far it's worked because, you know, I was, I was expecting that you'd get a frustrated guy that would, you know, email and, you know, just say, oh, you know, you suck and all these fun things. But nope, not yet. Of course, I'm, I'm baiting them. I'll bait them on the radio show too. I'll see if anybody. So when, <laughs> when's your next appearance on uh, what show? Do you know? Uh, that's Monday at um, seven Pacific. And what's the station? I think or the it is. Hang on, I'm pulling it up right now. It is AllTalkRadio.net. Okay. And it's Monday night. Um, it is. Um, I'm sorry, six o'clock Pacific on Monday night. It's called the show's called Our Natural Rights, and uh, you know they seem pretty open-minded. And I don't, I think it's, I don't think I'm being, I'm debating with anybody. I don't think it's a roundtable or anything like that. I think it's just me giving a, a Reader's Digest version, similar to what what you and I've been talking about. 
and um, the host, uh, Michelle Johnson, if she has questions, I'll, you know, I'll just field them, but um, we're going to, we're going to kind of do a rundown tomorrow and, and um, see what she wants me to do. But so far, again, everybody's been super positive and, uh, you know, no, no real naysayers. Uh, you know, even, even on the weird side, you know, even on like Godlike Productions, they haven't been torching me. Um, yeah, that's a waste of time looking there. Gee whiz. Yeah. What a mess. Yeah. Then, yeah, I know. It's, it's a soup sandwich sometimes. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, but the weird thing is, of course, uh, um, the actual flat earth society.org, you know, oh, the, what the have actual, they said? Re- and is that a well, controlled opposition site? That's, you know, that's where I don't know. I'm a member, you know, yeah. it took, took well quite a few months to get my membership thing, right. but they haven't really contacted me to join into the forums or do any, you know, do anything like that. I've got some guys that are mirroring some stuff, but then it was really weird. Like the first time they mirrored my videos, it was put into the complete nonsense bin. Oh, I'm going, nice. wait a minute. I was going, wait a minute, this is the Flat Earth Society. I'm I'm like your biggest champion right now and you're and you're and you're you know, throwing me in the trash right away. I haven't even I haven't even posted a single thing in the forums. So they you know, so people keep coming back and trying to mirror stuff. So yeah, is it controlled opposition? I don't know. Well, that well, makes opposition. yeah, it kinda of makes sense, but that's why do you really I was I was gonna post your video just on my server, not on YouTube, and just see if I can get some real numbers. Because hey, I don't trust you. Work. I don't trust YouTube's numbers necessarily either. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that too. You know, because yeah, because of course that's one of the first things you jump after if you're going to control something is you control every aspect. Yeah, of, I mean, especially especially on YouTube. Yeah, they'll say uh-huh. no. Nobody's looking at this, and they think, oh, why am I looking at this? No one's looking at it. Yeah, it's it's all psychological. There's no doubt. This yeah. is the psychological warfare department we're dealing with. You're not dealing with uh, a bunch of guys with uh, AK. 47 slung over their back these are the best and the brightest and and i'm convinced that the media hoaxes that are brought to us are bought brought to you by budding screenwriters if they pull off a good fake event in some way they're given yeah. a movie hey they'll say hey make the movie of that and we'll make I, you a big star just like the stars are not really rich people they're all on salary yeah yeah, I I agree. Uh, there's so many little things that, for me though, and this is just a message to whoever's listening out there. Uh, you know, as far as the authority, if that is, you just don't fake stuff anymore because the the hive mind. I mean, if you're basically you're gonna if you're gonna do it, you might as well do it for real. And that sounds horrible and grim. That <laughs> yeah, does sound bad. But but it does. But at the same time, the the hive mind of the internet is so good at finding stuff now you know it's it's no you know the, the exaggeration isn't you know but when i say moviemistakes.com everybody knows what i'm talking about and that is there are people out there that will go through a, a blu-ray frame mm-hmm. by frame to you know and if a coffee cup moves you know in a scene without the actor moving it you, you, you're going to hear about it yeah, you can't true. you can't fake anything anymore I and mean, you've seen it i mean it doesn't even take it doesn't even take 72 hours you know before you know if somebody does something before immediately you know it's just it's just shredded they're just shredded um and half of those where, half of those debunkers could be the original authors as well to control they the could, debunking. They, they could be you, you're, yeah. you're absolutely right but for yeah, me it's like you know so. it comes down to look look production value is key mm-hmm. and it's like look, get it right i mean i i i hate sloppy sloppy stuff where you know the obvious stuff is missed and you know unless you've got unless there's an alternative or i'm sorry unless there's a a reason why you left it that way i just wouldn't do it so yeah every time i see you know something you know especially a regional thing or you know something a a, one of your smaller things that's on the news it's obviously staged it's not for you though it's for the masses you're in a very slight percent see now you've been turned you've been flipped you now see it you can't stop seeing it you can't unsee things yeah and you're i still think if you went out in the street and talked to 10 people you would yeah they'd eat it up say oh yeah 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 you're right you're right you got a good point there i just it's just for me it's like it's like watching well bad bad television I'm just watching. It's going, oh, really? But but then I look behind the scenes because you mentioned, oh, you know, some of the best writers. I'm just going, come on, some of these guys got, you know, they're they're lazy. Then, you know, they're they're just they're just slapping some stuff together every once in a while. Maybe, or yeah. maybe there's a t- maybe there's a timeline issue. Yeah. But yeah. there's there's little things that are just missed. But to the point again, it's like you, it's just so hard. I, I I don't even know. I don't even if I could do an op. 
and this is me being hypothetical, I just don't know if I could, I, I don't even know if I'd have the confidence to, uh, to do it with any amount of budget because there's just too many people out there that, mm-hmm. you know, cause it only takes one guy to spot one little thing that everybody else missed. And, uh, and then the whole thing starts to, to unravel. Yeah, but if you but, think that they're compa- co- if they're done compartmentalized, where one guy yeah. gets one thing, then someone has to tie it together, and then someone has to check for continuity. Good, I, good I point. Mean, yeah, yeah, you're I right. I don't think I you'd should... get to do the whole op yourself. So if it really is the military, <laughs> then they split up tasks, and it's probably hard to stitch it all together if different guys yeah, do different sections. You're right. Just like any project and any business, it's yeah. not perfect. We have yeah. one guy got to be the control freak and do everything, but it, that w- then it might take too long. And they say, yeah. I, I need this for next uh, – we got an opening in uh, November this year. Uh, we yeah. don't have any psyops for three weeks. Could you get one in there? And then, yeah. you know, you got to get your budget. You got to get your people. Oh, this guy's busy. He's working on a movie. I mean, just you, you can no, just you're, think you're of the absolutely. planning. You're absolutely right. You you made me think of stuff I, I didn't take into account. Yeah, um, if you did I, it yourself, good luck. But how long did it take you to do these videos? It's, it's, it's a lot of work, right? People don't realize how is, much time it, it is, takes. It is, and that's just and that's just a tiny little yeah segment compared. Um, yeah. Hey, hate to catch you off, yeah. but I do want to give you one more story before I go because I'm yeah. sure I got to run. Yeah, me too. Um, and that was, did you ever know the backstory of Capricorn One, the movie? I did watch it, and we have talked a lot about it. But yeah, tell me something about it because there, I there, I consider that some... yeah controlled. That's a controlled release, and someone I know, I, and I, Miles I Mathis. Me. Sorry, I'll, sorry to interrupt because I want to get this out before I forget. No, no, no. Go ahead. Miles yeah. Mathis, who is some entity on the internet, who knows yeah. who he is. I never got a hold of him. Okay. But he's a great thinker. He's the one that gave me the idea that the CIA creates majority opinion, and that's their sole mission. And yep. anyway, he did a breakdown on Capricorn 1 and explained why and how it was done. Because you would, you would ask, why would NASA willingly basically explain how the, the moon hoax was created? Sure. And he explains in his, his passage, in his essay on it, why. But sorry, go ahead. Oh no 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 no! It's cool. Um, there was a and 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 this may actually work into what you were just going to say. There was a neat little side side story, and it's, it's a wiki thing. You know, it's not one of those you know hearsay things. He um or although wiki is sometimes hearsay, the um where where initially the you know because it was an independent film. It wasn't a it wasn't a studio film, and it was the highest grossing independent film of that year. With but OJ, what I thought it. was in, what, what what I thought was interesting was the um uh. The the you know the guy that that threw in the most money you know at least publicly was a, a CBS television producer who had um, who had worked in the you know see because you know the movie was in seventy nine and and the last what moon broadcast was in seventy two so he he was part of the television team that was helping rebroadcast you know that second generation crap that was you know the feeds from NASA mm-hmm. and apparently he was he was upset enough with the um, uh, the production value. What, kind of what I was saying, the production value. He was he's watching the screen. He's going, "Oh, this is just awful." You know, terribly good. You you know, and how that snowballs. Like I could make something better than that. You know, in fact, I could make a Mars movie better than that. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's how you know where the initial inspiration. Now, you know, was it? Would did that inspiration initially come from somewhere else, like CIA? Oh, very possibly. You're talking but about like, Capricorn One, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, but I liked I liked that angle where. Again, you know, they were looking at it from, uh, you know, from, uh, from, from just the broadcast that they were, you know, retransmitting, you know, that they thought it was such poor quality, which it was. It was awful. It was grainy and terrible. Well, listen to this. See if you agree with this because I can't say yeah. this. I wrote this down on my blog. Before we move yeah. on, let me answer my own question. Why did NASA cooperate? With Capricorn One, and you know they allegedly cooperated, right? Well, yeah, you'd have to. to So it says the answer is damage control. The movie was conceived of and promoted by the government itself. They weren't confirming the moon landing was a hoax, of course. No, they were taking an idea which they knew was already in the head of the nation and trying to turn it subtly away from its target. They were planting this idea in the heads of those watching the film. Yes, the government might be corrupt enough to plan something like this, but they could never get away with it because too many good and honest people, like Elliot Gould, would expose it. It involves too many uncontrollable factors and unpredictable outcomes for any agency to get away with it. 
At the end of Capricorn 1, the hoax is exposed. That is the crucial element of the film, not the hoax itself. Just as with Watergate, these things eventually come out of the dark. Or is this what the audience of Capricorn 1 was meant to conclude? And most of them did conclude just that. They thought that they had gotten to the bottom of Watergate with Nixon's demise. And they were assured by Capricorn 1 that if something fishy had gone on with the moon landing, that it would also come out eventually. The fact that nothing did ever come out of the moon landing, either before or after 1978, seems to confirm to most people that the moon landing was real. So that is the essence of Capricorn 1. And it seems such a dangerous thing for NASA to cooperate, make a movie like this, put the idea in people's mind. But the way they ended it was crucial. And because I it mean, diffused it. Yeah, they just said it would. Okay, in the movie it came out because it was such a dumb idea. But in yeah. real life, it didn't come out. We went to the moon because it would have come one. out just like in the movie. And Good the way one. they confuse movies and reality is so beautiful yeah. all the time. Yeah. That is what allows them to control the message all the time. That's oh, what's yeah. so brilliant. I mean, I this like is that. heavy stuff. This is heavy psychological warfare. you got to really think this stuff through. I have to, I have yeah. to read that all the time to remind myself because I can never explain why they did Capricorn 1. i got to reread that because it makes so much sense, but it's it's complex. Yeah. Yeah, dig it. I totally dig it. But anyway, Thanks, thank man. you so much. This has been great. Oh, no. This is very no, impromptu. No worries at all. I'm glad um, I got you right. I just said, oh, he left his phone number nine times. So I think I'll just give him a buzz, see if he answers the phone, see if, um, you know, the military under the Denver airport doesn't answer the phone. <laughs> so if someone answers, like, how, how, how may I transfer you? Yeah, 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 exactly. Can I transfer your call? What department do you want? Uh, the general's out today. Uh, exactly. But Exactly. Yeah, yeah, this has been really I, I should have, cool. I should have answered NSA. This is Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or uh, yeah, DARPA or whatever the hell. Uh, DARPA, could, yeah. nice. But you've got the um, the great video series now. It's a series, Flat Earth Clues, part one to nine, with the guide at the beginning. I've I've ripped yeah. the audio. I'm going to listen to the audio tomorrow, just without Super. the imagery, and see if I can get more out of it. But That's everyone awesome. should uh, definitely. Go to my blog, fakeologist.com. I've got the post to just the videos up so people can look at it on YouTube. And, and I'll post this audio probably tomorrow sometime. And you can download it and pass it around or link to it if you want. But cool. uh, yeah, this is fantastic. I, I, I'm going to absorb this. I'm going to um, comment with my membership on it and see if they think I'm completely out to lunch or right on target. <laughs> I'll see how they react and I'll definitely have to have you back. Oh, thank you. Then maybe, I'd love to, I'd love to do it. Yeah. Um, maybe on yeah. Skype. So you come through even more clearly. Sure. Um, yeah. Sure. You bet. Uh, yeah. in fact, uh, I just, just redid my Skype thing, got a new camera and uh, headset. So yeah. I mean, well, yeah, I don't, I don't need the camera. We don't, I won't, uh, <laughs> we'll just use audio is fine. I'm, oh, okay. I got a face for radio myself, so I'll just, <laughs> I'll just, uh, we'll just keep it on. I'm still not in the, I, I'm just not into public exposure. I like talking about I gotcha. it, but I, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I shouldn't be this way, but until uh, maybe another 1% is on board with anything I'm saying, forget yeah. this and that. I just like to just be sort of semi-anonymous. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. I mean, you're way braver than I am. So is Simon and others. But <laughs> I, there's a, it, I, I, just haven't reached, brave. I just haven't reached the comfort level. So good for you, man. I mean, yeah. you put it out there. And the, the, I think you're you're touching probably one of the, toughest nuts to crack and that's got to be whatever we're standing on like i said so good well, on you thanks. great it's video definitely definitely a challenge but thank you very much all uh, right and yeah let next time you want to do it you just let me know and i'm i'm all yours yeah all right well thanks so much mark and uh have a good night you too all right take care bye-bye okay bye all right guys Whew, that was an impromptu uh, fakeologist radio. I just phoned the number and someone answered. I didn't. I didn't think he'd answer, but here we are, almost two hours into the call. If you're listening to this live, thanks for listening. Don't forget to set your clocks back or ahead forward. It's 
March 7th, 2015. We just talked to Mark Sargent, and he's got this pretty cool Flat Earth Clues video. Uh, it hit me pretty hard that someone actually put the story of this Flat Earth or whatever we're spinning on or floating on uh, into a pretty comprehensive, concise video. Uh, watch all nine plus one parts. And uh, let's talk about it. This is pretty cool. And once more, have a good night. Take care, everybody.